How much for a stylish hood? 90,000! Oh, 90,000 gold? That's nothing. No! 90,000 red dust! Red dust? Ugh, fine. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was totally worth it. Ladies, gentlemen, and Haradrim of all ages, we are all enjoying Diablo 4 to the fullest extent right now, taking part in whatever activities have drawn us in personally, but there is one endgame activity that people seem to be avoiding quite a bit, and personally I think that's due to a bit of a misunderstanding. The Fields of Hatred, the quote-unquote PvP zones. Many players have never even entered one for longer than it took to get the Altars of Lilith within them, and the reasoning for that is understandable. They are called PvP zones, and PvP of course does take place within them. So if you have no interest in PvP, then why would you go there, right? Well, what if I told you that there are ways to treat the Fields of Hatred as an entirely PvE area, only fighting NPCs? And on top of that, make it reward not only the unique cosmetics that only come from this activity, but also a buttload of legendaries and potential uniques as well. Today we're going to be talking all about the Fields of Hatred, what it can get you, some effective ways to utilize the area, even if you aren't a fan of PvP in Diablo as a concept, you know, don't really want to fight other players with this system, and just some general tips for surviving in here and also thriving too. To start off, let's talk about the rewards so you know why you actually would want to do this in the first place. As you kill things in the field of hatred, you will collect seeds of hatred. These are the unpurified version of the currency. You cannot spend it in this state, and if you log out with seeds of hatred, they are lost forever. Instead, you want to go to one of the various extractors located on your map and initiate an event. This tells other players that are in the area that something is happening, and if you stay alive and within the boundaries for the 45 to 50 second timer, then your seeds of hatred will be converted into red dust. This is the permanent version of this, the actual proper currency, the one that you can actually spend at the vendors. If we then head into town with your red dust, you can spend this on lots of things like horse cosmetics, trophies, various horse armors, and also even a full on horse itself that you cannot get from anywhere else in the game. So if any of these are your style and you want it, this activity is the only way to get it. There is also one one set of armor cosmetics that you can buy. These are pretty expensive, but the main reason is that this set looks different for every class in the game. Here's what they look like actually on a character for each one of the classes if you want to see them. They are of course dyeable, so you don't have to use them in their default looking colors. They sort of look sort of nasty in those for some of them. Some of the sets as a whole are just sort of meh. Some of them are quite decent. For example, I really like the Barb one specifically because it is the only helmet that looks like a hood for Barb. Pretty much everything else that Barbarian has is just like a big metal head trap, but I like the grungy hood look that covers your eyes. It's sort of mean looking and it fits Barbarian to me. Aside from this, and this is honestly a main focus of why I'm sharing this with you all today, there is the Red Dust Gambling Vendor. This has a fair amount of similarities to the Murmuring Obel Gambling Vendor that you'll probably have been making use of your entire journey through the game, except obviously it uses Red Dust as the currency that you spend here instead. It can only give you armor slots, sadly, you can't get weapons or amulets or rings, but the actual legendary rate from rolling on this is actually insane. Here you can see I did five gambles on helmets and I got three legendaries out of the five rolls. That means three legendaries for 15,000 red dust and you can get 15,000 a lot quicker than you'd probably think if you haven't done the activity properly yourself. Aside from that, you can also purchase cursed scrolls, which aren't really a reward that you can take with you so much as things that will augment your time within the fields of hatred themselves. The scroll of recklessness gives you a ton of movement speed but drains your life. The scroll of tranquility reduces the damage that you receive from other players, but increases the damage from NPCs, and the Scroll of Chaos teleports you randomly to another location in the Fields of Hatred. This is your sort of get out of jail free card if a level 100 starts running up on you and you really don't want to die at that point in time. That said, with all of that covered, let's go over something specific. From this point on, I'm going to be talking about how to farm Fields of Hatred and treat it as a PvE experience only killing NPCs, how to make tons of elite spawn here, more so than anywhere else in the overworld, giving it an elite spawn rate that is comparable to some of the best loot farming dungeons. And the one big caveat to that, of course, is other players. Obviously, sometimes if you load into Fields of Hatred, there will be a level 100 guy just running around in a build that is made only for killing players, and they'll just be one-shotting everyone they come across, including you. That will happen. The big thing is, if you are just here to farm for legendaries, you actually lose nothing when you die. Of course, you get reset on your Seeds of Hatred, but the actual legendaries that you've been picking up from the elites you've been killing stick with you, of course. The only thing that you actually lose is the Seeds of Hatred. The trick here is if you see a player running around like a maniac like this, just log out and log back in. This will put you in a new world. I don't want to live on this planet anymore. 
And doing this takes you away from the old players, including the murder hobos, bunches you up with a bunch of new players, and more often than not, you will find one where there isn't just a wheel of death spinning around the map, taking everyone down. Then you can set up your farm route, because the thing is, a lot of players actually do treat this as just a PvE zone when they're in it. They don't really want to kill you. There's only a rare few that actually will, and it's usually level 100 guys just looking for a fight. And normally, they care a lot more about fighting other level 100 guys than they do about just picking on the little guys that they one-shot instantly. It's just not fun for them. The big thing about Fields of Hatred that makes it interesting for this purpose, though, is that any given pack of enemies on a Field of Hatred can, and regularly will, spawn with elites within them. Interestingly, that means the best way to farm this area is to literally just kill everything, because when it respawns, it has a high chance of becoming an elite. You could just roam around on a horse going through the entire zone, only dismounting when you come across an elite pack at random, but that will run a much higher chance of earning the ire of another player and convincing them that maybe they should kill you because you're taking their farm away. Instead, what I would recommend doing is going to the southern field of hatred, the one by the Denshar waypoint on your map, and then focusing a nice circle of enemies around either the northern or southern extractor. These two are relatively out of the way, especially the northern one. It's far away from a lot of the things that people will be focusing on. What you do is just run in a circle around the extractor, killing every pack of mobs that is nearby. If you complete your circle and the mobs haven't respawned yet, then you need to just make your circle wider until the respawn timer actually lines up. If you do this right, every group has a decently high chance to spawn with elites, and when they are actively being killed on repeat, that chance seems to go up even higher, it seems to just be a function of the Fields of Hatred, so you can sort of just move in a circle, killing everything in sight, and collecting the goodies that they drop, a never-ending farm that has quite a lot of elites, and thus a lot of legendary and unique drop chances as a result. I got tons of legendaries, even just in the footage that I did for this video, that said the circle farm of mobs and elites is great for legendaries, but it also gets you quite a bit of Seeds of Hatred, because elites enemies will drop over 200 Seeds of Hatred for each one. And this is what makes this method actually really good as it doubles up, because if you convert those Seeds of Hatred into Red Dust, you can spend them to the Gambling Vendor, which as I pointed out earlier, has really good legendary return rates. Not to mention that Whispers of the Dead often has objectives within these areas, and you can complete those to get a third chance at legendaries from doing the exact same activity. As well, if you recognize that you are in an instance where people just aren't really killing each other, I'd have a look out for the Big Area Boss. He has a notable symbol on the map when he's around, and he drops nearly 5,000 Seeds of Hatred by himself on death. That said, let's talk about extracting your Seeds of Hatred to be able to turn them into red dust. If, again, you recognize your instance seems to be friendly, if people aren't really killing each other in it, then just go for it. Extract somewhere, no problem, people probably won't come for you. For your safety though, I would recommend not blowing any of your cooldowns on the little mobs that will spawn during the extraction to fight you, save everything in case a player does decide to come and try to rain on your parade. If you are in a bit more of a contested instance, if people are killing each other, but they're just not near you, so you've been able to farm, what you want to do is just sort of wait a bit. You still want to extract, of course, but the trick is to let somebody else do it first. It puts a pop-up on your screen when somebody starts an extraction in the Fields of Hatred, and if you are just farming in a circle anyways, you can just keep farming your circle until someone else does this far away from you. Once they've started, wait about 15 to 20 seconds into their timer, then start an extraction yourself. What this does is give time for any blood-hungry players in the region to already start moving towards that first extractor. By the time they are finished there, your extraction will only have 10 to 15 seconds left, so they often can't even physically get to you in time. And, well, just for fun, if you ever do have someone trying to kill you while you're extracting, you can always just try playing Ring Around the Rosie with the extractor itself. This is a Whirlwind Barbarian that I had a bit of an exchange with earlier. He came at me while I was farming elites, and I dunked on him because he just sort of walked into a pulverize. Then he came back while all my stuff was on cooldown and killed me and took my big bundle of seeds of hatred I've been saving up, so I went out on a mission to kill him back so I could get my seeds back. I did that, and then immediately I went off to extract. He, of course, tried to stop me. He went to the extractor because he knew it would be me, and at this point, I just wanted to have some fun with him. So yeah, as you can see, literally just staying out of his range the entire time, walking in a circle around the object that you can't walk through, giving him no opportunity to actually kill me for the entire timer. And then, of course, he got me after the extraction was over because I spent all my resources just avoiding him, but at that point, the moral victory victory was mine, or at least that's what I tell myself so I can sleep at night. So yeah, to sum everything up, Fields of Hatred is actually a good farming location if you don't mind dying occasionally, because it will happen, just go to another instance, it's not a big deal. Every pack of mobs can spawn with elites, which is really good, so you just pick a corner of the area and carve through every living thing until stuff respawns, and then repeat that process. You will get quite a lot of elite density doing this, and unlike a dungeon where you have to awkwardly reset it by logging out, or by doing another dungeon to make the infinite resetting thing happen. This is 
an infinitely repeatable activity. Being overworld content, the things will just respawn. This gives you tons of seeds of hatred and lots of rolls for legendary and unique gear as well. Then when you are done for the time being, you can extract by using another player's extraction as bait, and then once you have your seeds of hatred converted into red dust, you can then spend this on various cosmetics if you want, or items to improve your time in the fields of hatred, or my favorite personally, the thing that really makes this worth it is the red dust gambling, which again gave me three legendaries for five gambles, which improves the legendary rate of this activity significantly. On top of that, Whispers of the Dead has objectives within these zones, so you can constantly complete Whispers by interacting with Fields of Hatred, and that can drop even more legendaries from the Whispers itself. All in all, this is to say that Fields of Hatred are an activity that you can treat as just PvE if you want to. Obviously, not everyone will, so all you have to do is switch to a new instance if there's a death ball level 100 going around just one-shotting you, because there are a ton of instances of this activity where people are all just actually friendly and trying to accomplish their own goals, not really wanting to interact with other players. I hope you've enjoyed this breakdown of Fields of Hatred, why you should be doing it, and how you can look at it as a PvE experience just mowing down NPCs. I hope this helps you in your journey to collecting loads of cosmetics and, of course, experience and gear, because we all want that beautiful, legendary, and unique gear. Like if you liked the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye